Perfect. How you doing this morning, Scott? Good, good. Sorry about that, man. No I'm worries. doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, man. I think um, a lot of people are going to be able to really relate and connect with the message that you're going to have to share with us. And I'm going to make sure that I provide the link um, via the podcast as well as in YouTube so that way everybody else can join us that's not with us currently live. But, you know, Scott, I have a lot of respect for you, man. And, you know, what I mentioned about the governor, this is something that a lot of people let control and guide their lives. But I genuinely feel like you don't have a governor that's controlling your life. And I admire mm. that. And I want to I want to get your perspective of, you know, if there was a time in which a governor did control your life and how you kind of released yourself from that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, you know, I'm free. I'm free. I, I, I believe all things are possible with God. And um, I used to, I used to have limits or I used to have um, my own ideas. And um, now I, I feel like I've kind of given it over to God and like whatever he wants is possible for me. And many times, honestly, he just blesses me <laughs> for doing, for doing the right thing, for trying to do the right thing, not for not for not being greedy or, or whatever that we can get wrapped up into very easily in business and money. And, and we accumulate bills and we put pressure on ourselves. Um, so it, life is difficult when we come at it from the wrong perspective and we, and we look at people as a paycheck, you know, Absolutely. Get our customers as a paycheck, but you know, I don't have a governor on my life. He's my governor. God's my governor. The Lord is, whatever, you know, like whatever he wants, I'll do. And he knows that. So, um, and because of that, like the sky's the limit, you know, at the same time. I love that. I do love that. Well, Scott, you know, aside from that, you had a very important message that I think a lot of people, um, need to hear and also want to hear. And, you know, I'm not going to stand in your way this morning, man. And I'm just going to, I'm going to be here if you need it. And if we're going to have a conversation, please just let me know. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate Absolutely. It. I appreciate you, Scott. Thank you. So, um, basically everybody, I, I hope, uh, I, I had something come to my mind at the end of last week that I wanted to share with everybody. And there are a few different things I want to, I want to cover before my time is up, but the main theme of what I want to talk about which I hope helps some people. Um, and just so you know, I do not consider myself a great salesperson. I think I'm a good salesperson. I think I, I'm good at what I do. But the reason that I succeed, um, I believe, is because of what I'm going to bring up right now. And that is the power of polite and fun-loving persistence. And it might sound kind of weird, but... Um, that's how I look at it. The power of polite and fun, loving persistence. Uh, polite because if you're polite with people, it gives you a lot of leeway. You know, um, if you if you make sure that you're polite and respectful all the time, people will bear with you much longer. So that's part of it. Um, and then fun, loving persistence because. You know, you could you could be persistent with people to an annoying point, <laughs> but if you joke about it or you you have fun with them in the process of that, once again, it gives you a lot of leeway, and people like respect you because you're being real with them and and um, showing them that you're a real person, um, not all about the sale. So, as we know, a big part of probably any sales, but especially probably telesales is building rapport with people, getting them comfortable with you where they trust you. And that's why the script is so important. Um, I have in my notes for this morning to stick to the script. The script is really well designed and allows you to build rapport with them fairly quickly, especially in the five questions. Uh, if you spend some time in those five questions and it loosens people up, it breaks them down. It makes them 
like you um, or trust you to a certain degree because you're talking about their lives and uh, what's really important, which is usually their families. So um, I'm going to get back to the script in a minute, but back to polite and fun-loving persistence. I hope this is a mindset that helps some of you because I think some people get so wrapped up in the sales and the numbers that they don't do their job like they could or they should. You know, again, looking at people like a paycheck, um, which, by the way, I fall into too. We all fall into that at times whether it's because of money pressures or because we're greedy and we want to get rich, uh, we fall into that wrong way of looking at things. So if you step back and you say, you know what, this is a person, probably my mother's age, my grandmother's age, whatever, and they're a grandmother or mother to other people, and I'm going to treat them like my family. And if you do that and you, you almost – almost in your mind as you're talking to them, adopt them as a, as a grandparent, <laughs> adopt them as a mother while you're on the phone with them. I don't mean literally, obviously, or even voicing that. But if that's the way you think about them and you start to think about them and you want to do the right thing for them and their family, that comes across on the phone. And then they start to trust you. And, you know, if that's not real to you, if you have trouble doing that, I say pray about it. I say ask God for the strength and the wisdom to look at people that way instead of as a paycheck. So, again, I, I think a lot of people or some people think that these sales should be a, a rollover, like a layup. You know, the leads should be so good that I just walk in and they want to buy and it's a piece of cake. The The Truth about that, for me anyway, is that probably only two out of 10 sales, I would call a layup, where they just totally go along with you. But the other eight require persistence through smoke screens. The people are going to give you smoke screens, and by the way, you're going to believe them, but you must persist through them. So in other words, like I've had people... Um, and I'm, I know you all have too. I've had people say to me, well, I'm not buying today. I can't. My husband's not here. Um, I have no money. Um, maybe in March will be a better time. Now, it's very, very easy for us to give in to that and say, oh, there's no way they're going to buy. I should just hang up now. But no, I cannot tell you how many of my sales that were made in the last four weeks were based on not – giving in, not uh, getting down. And again, we're, we're going to talk about attitude in a minute. Not getting down when people give you an objection. Not doubting that you can somehow overcome it. So when people say something like that to me, even though I'm tempted to get down and be like, all right, I'll call you back. And almost go on to the next one. No, no, no. I'm like, oh, you know what, Mrs. Jones, that's totally fine. Margaret, that's totally fine. My job is just to let you know what you qualify for. Do you mind if I just give you a quote? I got to ask you a few questions. I'll give you a quote. Then it's totally up to you. And I can't tell you how many times by sticking with it with a positive attitude like that, that five or ten minutes later when you give them the quote and, and, and they actually like the quote, that, that you assume going forward with it, you say, okay, I'm going to open up the application. Let's see if you qualify. I can't tell you how many times it's turned into a sale. But at that critical point, when it's so easy to get down or give in, um, you mustn't. You have to persist in a polite, fun-loving way. All right? You have to persist and do your job and say, you know what? My job is to let you know what you qualify for. Whether you decide to go forward with it is totally up to you. I want to let you know what you qualify for because I want to help you take care of your family. So have that attitude. Um, people respect persistence if you show them you care for them and their families. They might be a little bit annoyed, but they're not going to be annoyed if you um, reveal to them that you care about them and covering their families, covering the kids. So again, 
I hope uh, it helps some of you just think about it that way. Have a polite and fun-loving persistence. Um, some, I would say throughout my conversations, I call my customers by their first name, but sometimes throughout the script, I call them sir or ma'am. And I alternate back and forth between their name and that, that polite term. And I think it goes a long way. I could be wrong, but I think it wins people over and shows them that you're, um, you care about them and doing the right thing. So the last thing I want to say on persistence before we get into attitude is I keep calling people until they tell me they're not interested. I don't know about you guys. Um, some of you probably do this exact same thing, but I will call people 10 times in a two week period. If I have not getting them, gotten them to say, I'm not interested, don't call me anymore. And I don't call them 10 times a day. That's, that's just going to piss them off. You know, excuse my French, but um, I'll call them twice a day. And if they keep, it keeps ringing, I'll call them the next day. I'll call them the next day. If I get them on the phone and they say, well, you know, uh, call me back tomorrow, I will call them back tomorrow. And eventually, some of these leads turn into sales. I look at these leads like gold. Um, whether or not you think they're the best leads in the world, that's, that's up to you. But I look at them like gold. Every one of them has a value. And I don't want to just blow them. Um, so I keep calling them until me, they tell me they're not interested. And as long as I'm polite about it, you know, even I'll leave a message. If someone doesn't answer the phone five, six, seven times, I'll finally leave a message and be like, you know what? I really want to help you. I know you're wondering who I am, but I'm calling back because you spoke to our benefit coordinator. Please give me a call back. That doesn't always work, but it saves a couple leads and turns them into business that are easy to give up on. So uh, that, that was the main point that I wanted to share with you is to have polite and fun loving persistence. Um, try to make jokes also at the same time when appropriate to disarm them, let them know you're a real person. Now, I just want to talk for a couple minutes about attitude. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine who's, who's on our team too uh, on Friday via chat and the thing about attitude is we have to stay above the line. There's a certain line that you can't drop below if you're going to succeed and have people talk to you and respond to you. you you've got to keep a somewhat positive attitude. You've got to keep a positive outlook about how, for example, even if it's bottom line that the numbers game will work for you, even if you're not a great salesperson or you're in a mood or something, even if you have a positive attitude that you know the numbers game works, and if you call enough people, you will get what you need. You'll get enough business. So attitude is key. Stay above the line. And if you find yourself struggling, call Rita before you call people. Call Rita for an attitude adjustment before you call your customers. And let him help you get up you know, and get ready and call people with the right, um, the right spirit. Uh, because one thing about the script that we have and the leads that we have, I love the opening line about the, uh, the color. You know, you said your favorite color is blue, correct? It gets them to agree immediately. And when they agree immediately, you now have an open door. They're on your side, and then you talk about the pandemic or whatever and get them talking. But... On that initial call, when you when you when they answer the phone, you must start each call with an upbeat introduction to catch them off guard. You must start each call with an upbeat intro to catch them off guard. W what other, you know, let's use the word telemarketer. What other telemarketer calls them with an upbeat attitude where it catches them off guard and they're like, hey, do I know this person? Why are they so why are they so upbeat? You know? Um, have energy in, in that introduction. And it gets them to listen to you for that two seconds it takes 
to get to the color question, to get to the pandemic conversation. And, and you're in. And you're starting to flow. But your attitude must be up on that initial call. I don't care if you have to do some jumping jacks before you get on the phone. Do something to wake up and call them with a little enthusiasm. Because you have the power to help these people and help their families. And uh, you should be excited for that, that you actually have a way to help people instead of a job that doesn't have any. um, There are plenty of jobs out there where you don't have the ability to directly help someone. You know, so we should thank God for that, too, and be grateful. So uh, at this point, I want to just get into a few miscellaneous things that I hope help some of you. Regarding the script. Stick to the script. It's a well-designed script that works. And there are two things in particular I want to mention. Um, Number one, how to get the bank information. It is a brilliant approach on getting the bank information. I never did telesales until whatever it is, eight months ago when I really started doing this. And in my head, I was like, people aren't going to give you that bank information too easily. You know, however, The approach on the script is awesome, and it works, it seemingly, almost every time. So follow the script. If you don't know what it says, it basically says, okay, Mrs. Jones, what's the name of your bank? Okay, I'm going to look it up on my computer. I'm going to look up the routing number. Can you grab your bank information so you can make sure I have the right routing number? So number one, it shows you have access to information. You're not asking them for the information. And they're they're pulling out their information to verify your information. And then when you read that routing number and they they say, yep, that's the right one. Okay, great. Can you read me your account number, please? And it's like a piece of cake, nine out of 10 times. But if you don't use that approach, you're just, you know, climbing uphill for no reason. So especially on the bank info, stick to that approach. And then also regarding the social security number, which is something I thought would be another trouble, another problem when I got into the sales sales, I think it's just important to get them on a roll in giving you information. So as you go to an application, let's say online, and you're with the company application, you start collecting information. Do not ask for the social security number in a vacuum. Do not ask for it first and do not ask for it in a vacuum. In other words, if I see social security numbers, the next thing I have to ask, and I don't feel like there's a flow going yet, I'll skip it and I'll go to the address, the phone number, your height and weight, whatever else is there. And then I'll, then I'll uh, seamlessly throw in the social security. And what's your social security, please? And they just keep giving the information. So, you know, part of our job is it's kind of like an art. And, and we have to learn and practice that art and that skill. But the script is wonderful. Um, I hope you just, I literally, eight months later, I literally read the script while I'm on the phone with them. And I have my places that I divert a little bit to make small talk or build rapport. Or maybe there's a word I don't like that's not me, so I change the word. But I read that script. and. Um, It just takes the pressure off of you and it works. So um, at this point, again, I just got a couple miscellaneous things I want to share with you and then we'll, I'll wrap up my portion again. Thanks to Jamal and Rita for letting me share with you. Um, One thing I just recently started doing is offering all my customers grand grandkids policies. Uh, as you may not may or may not know, United of Omaha has a very good children's policy. It's the best prices out there. Um, it lets the kids buy more insurance when they're 18 without any medical questions. And uh, also, the kids would have some cash value in there when they're 18 and going to school, if that's what they choose to do with it. But what I tell my customers, and this is usually after they bought from me, is I say, listen, I got to tell you, a lot of my customers like buying a, a policy for the grandkids. And the reason is for a $20,000 whole life policy, it's only seven to $10 a month. And they go, wow, 
I go, right. <laughs> and it builds cash value. And at age 18, they can buy more insurance without any medical questions. It's a wonderful thing to do for them. And what, what, I'm, what I'm finding is this opens up doors to get more business with the same person with very little effort. Um, to do a grandchild application takes five minutes on the, on the Mutual of Omaha site. Uh, the only catch is that they have to be able to sign through the email. So if they don't have an email or they, they're just not good at all on the computer, that would be tough. But other than that, um, it's an easy sale and an easy way to make an extra 100 bucks. And sometimes they want to get more. They're like, so it's only 10 bucks for 20000 How much is it for 40000 And now you've got a $250 AP sale. And uh, you pretty much didn't do much work. So just an idea, something to consider. I've started asking all my customers if they want one of those. Um, one other thing is that I really thank God that Rita, uh, I think it was Rita, maybe it was you, Jamal, too, that brought in the uh, GTL company to our package. Uh, Guaranteed Trust Life GTL, in my opinion, is a must-have. Uh, I sold several policies with them, and I think several of them would have gone to AIG. So what you have with GTL is uh, they pay more than AIG. Um, it's an easy application. It's only five medical questions. Get familiar with those five things. I actually wrote it down on my cheat sheet so I know the different health things they accept. But it's like a five-minute application and a two-minute phone verification. And it's a modified plan. It's not a guaranteed coverage. It's a modified plan that pays the children 50% in the second year. So it's really good for them. And a lot of the people that I would have sold AIG to, I sold GTL to. So in my opinion, they're a must-have for your portfolio. So I just want to wrap this up today uh, back to the concept of attitude. And when you're getting on the phone with people, the other thing I think that helps is to look at yourself as a counselor. You're a professional who can honestly really help them and their families. So if you have that attitude, they hear that attitude, that you're a professional, that you're not some fly-by-night guy or some telemarketer. You're calling them to counsel them on how they can better protect their families. And if you speak with that kind of authority, um, they will respond to that, I believe. And most importantly, you have to believe that you are an authority on life insurance. You're polite, you're fun-loving, but you are an authority and you express that confidence that you can help them get the best product for them and their families. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, I really hope that helps some of you. And if you want, uh, reach out to me on the chat if I can be of any help on Skype and um, or I'll be happy to chat with you as well. But thank you, Jamal and Rita, for all you do. You guys got a great system. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm out.